I'm sure some people will be showing up soon. <clears throat> All right, good, Stefan's here. That's the important person to share up. Dave, it's been a while. How are you? I'm doing okay, thanks. How are you? Good. I still have that can thing sitting on my desk in the basement, just FYI. No, good point. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean... On hold till like July or something. Okay. Oh, all right. Good. I knew it was on hold. I just didn't know how long, but that works yeah. for me, actually, because I'm surprisingly busy at the moment, so it's like that feast or oh, famine wow. thing. So... Uh -huh. Glad to hear it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. At least till July is the last they said, but don't hold your breath. <laughs> we'll, right. we'll, we'll probably do it someday. <laughs> okay. Hey, yeah. It's not going anywhere. So. All right. <clears throat> See a few new faces. Hey, guys. Hey. What's going on, Stefan? We had 35 people Ooh. sign up, so hopefully we'll get a bunch of people. That's great. Yeah. <clears throat> so are we having any more alarm meetings, Dave, or those just kind of go by the wayside for the moment? It seemed to have just disappeared. I, I got to admit, Sam, I just haven't uh, yeah. ha haven't been involved enough to follow up on it and figure it out. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I saw something about having one in January, and then I don't think anybody responded. And kind of yeah. I think so. I think it was a close call, but it finally finally dropped. I think we need somebody going to champion it and go and drive it. I feel like if somebody stepped up and did that, it would probably still go. But I, I, I'm not convinced. I think I think that would be true once we got back to in person, but I don't know whether that would be true huh. before that. <laughs> I mean, you could be right. Uh, I, I don't know. Well, we did have at least one virtual one, didn't we? I thought I hosted. Yeah, I think there were one or two, but it's just, it's harder. You know, it's just not as, it's not, not there as much. Hey, Sam, thanks. Thanks for the link to the vector oriented design class. Alan's class is really good, so I highly recommend it. Yeah, I, I try to get the budget on time, and yeah, it's it's not a good time slot here, so it's right ah. at night. But if if I get the budget, uh, I'll do the effort. Yeah, yeah. Well, if the timing doesn't work out, you can talk to Alan because he might he might go do it. He'd probably be interested in in doing something like that. So cool, Douglas. Are you officially retired now? Yes. <laughs> oh, all right. Congratulations. Three weeks ago. Three, three, three weeks ago. I'm just starting okay. to settle in. Yeah, yeah. So, yes. Nice. But it's not been brilliant weather here, so. Huh? But it's a lot better than what's going on in the States. Yeah, I was going to say, I think Texas was a little chilly for a while. <laughs> Rather chilly is an understatement by, by the sounds of things. Yeah. yeah, apparently they had all kinds of uh, problems. Yeah. So. It's interesting because I used to live in Pennsylvania and we had really bad winters. So when they first said, oh, it got cold, I was like, oh, no big deal. But, but losing power is uh, pretty bad at, at the yeah, point but time. They've got a very inefficient system as well. So it turns out. Yeah. Because theirs is not connected into the, the grid. They've got their own grid system. Yep. Yeah. And it They want to do their own thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. They want to do their own thing and they want everybody else to bail them out. So yeah. uh, we'll see what happens with that. All right. We'll wait another couple minutes because people are pouring in. Cool.
All right, we'll wait like one more minute. I'm through an introduction. Let me take off. All right, well, it seems like the trickle of people has slowed down. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So Stefan has plenty of time. Uh, I know most of you guys, so I'm not gonna waste a bunch of time with the whole marketing spiel. Uh, but uh, you know, we do help LabVIEW developers uh, write better code. And we do that through workshops. Uh, so we have a unit testing workshop, uh, QMH workshop, and we also have, we're putting together some online courses. So I don't know if you guys have seen, but we have a get course that we're working on. That's really good. It's a bunch of pre-recorded videos that you can go watch and some exercises. So I highly recommend you go check that out. Uh, you can get to that from our website. If you click on courses, it'll take you to the website of that. And I think that's about it. Uh, Stefan is gonna talk to us today about uh, how to be more efficient in programming levy. So a lot of shortcuts. Some of them you probably already know. I, I'm looking around, I know a lot of you guys are power users, so you probably know many of them, but I'm sure you will learn some new ones. Uh, they are always adding new ones. So there are definitely some that I had never even seen before and didn't even know existed. So, And uh, yeah, the goal, at least from my point of view, is to be able to get the repetitive coding tasks out of the way faster so we have more time to think about what we're doing and come up with better designs and make sure that we're addressing the problem correctly. So. All right, with that, let me, I need to allow. All right, you should be able to share your screen now, Stefan. Yeah, still some more people. I can now see your screen. So uh, if you have questions during this, post them in the chat and I will monitor that and uh, relay those to Stefan. Yeah, because I can't see the chat anymore right now. So, well, okay, welcome everybody. Um, I'm gonna talk about left few shortcuts today and as Sam told you, there are probably a lot that you know, but there are a lot of new ones lately and also very useful hidden ones. Um, so let's get started because there are a lot of shortcuts uh, to talk about. Uh, first, I want to mention uh, the, our giants, our female uh, slide. Uh, I want to talk about the ENIAC 6. ENIAC is a electronic numeric integrator and computer, which was a predecessor of our current computers. It was used during World War II to calculate artillery trajectories. So um, we're in the radar business and it's also something that I do from time to time. Um, ENIAC 6 is a team of six women um, and they were given the task to program the computer but programming it with wiring, plug bars, and setting switches. So they actually wrote the first programs to implement it with cables and switches. Uh, and they figured out how to program it, that computer. Um, but they were unrecognized for the efforts. They were in a secret army project. And after the World War, they, they didn't get any recognition. Um, the Computer uh, History Museum even thought they were the refrigerator ladies. So uh, just some models to make the product look good on the photos. But then in the mid 80s, it was discovered that they were actually the programmers and they got some more recognition. So it's another example of how women were forgotten by history. And um, they didn't have shortcuts. So um, that's, that's my link to this presentation. Uh, they, they, they just had to wire everything up and there were no shortcuts to make. Um, 
about me. I live in. I work at Intersoft Electronics, um, and my hobbies are running, playing board games, and reading. So you can find me on Strava, Board Game Geek, or Goodreads. I'm using LabVIEW since 1999, so that's the previous century. Um, since LabVIEW version 5.0. And I'm also a member of Sam Slapius mastermind group, and he's starting a second group. So I can highly recommend the, the mastermind group. We have a meeting twice a month, talk about Lapu related stuff, uh, some technical stuff, some project management stuff, all kinds of things. And it's really worth it. Um, you can also find me on Twitter and after this presentation, I'm going to start a weekly uh, tweet with highlighting one of these shortcuts. So might be interesting to follow that one. Uh, a little bit about Intersoft Electronics. Um, our head office is in Olam, Belgium, and we deliver radar analysis and support systems for, for uh, monitoring radars, uh, doing maintenance, um, that's how the business started. And lately we also have service life extension programs and do upgrades on radars. Um, here you can see some of our end markets. Um, so we, we deliver a lot of software and hardware. It's also where the name came from, Intersoft Electronics. So the interaction between software and electronics. Um, here are some examples of our Test equipment, doing on-site test equipment, so maintenance test equipment, and entire racks with signal processors, transmitters, displays, pros, uh, radar data processors, all kinds of stuff to upgrade um, old radars, get the old electronics out, and our new racks in. Um, for LabVIEW, we have a lot of uh, applications that run in LabVIEW that do mostly offline analysis. We have some online uh, stuff as well, um, but we do a lot of uh, offline data analysis to monitor the radar's performance and to correct for it, to calibrate it. Uh, a lot of things are Active Framework based, also with uh, plugins in PEC project libraries. And we also focus a lot on process improvement. So using continuous integration with Jenkins, I use the Git fork lately, and we have a lot of uh, Atlassian tools, Bitbucket, Chira, um, doing code reviews and, and using design guidelines with VI Analyzer, uh, doing unit testing with the JKI VI tester. And we have a Delacore um, a suite that we bought that helps us a lot in in the processes and uh, the VI analyzer stuff. Now for today, I'm gonna to talk about shortcuts and the presentation first talks about native LabVIEW shortcuts. Um, there's also a PDF that everybody can get, which is actually a booklet that I made a couple of years ago. Um, you can see it but some of you have it. Um, and the first half of the PDF is actually things that are native in LabVIEW. And the other half are community shortcuts that you, some plugins that you have to install. But the PDF contains all the links to every plugin so you can find it easily on the forums and install it. This presentation is not about how to install those plugins or how to create your own plugins. It's mentioning a lot of useful shortcuts and plugins. So why use shortcuts? It increases your efficiency. It prevents repetitive strain injury, or you can just be lazy and uh, uh, don't want to click too much. Um, there are multiple ways to do the same thing. So you can choose to do it with a quick drop plugin or with a 
right click menu, just choose the one that fits you best. Shortcuts help you to code faster, but that doesn't mean code better. Um, it will save you some time and you get more time to think about your code, to review the code, to clean it up and to document it. And you can even automate these last three, so then you have even more time to overthink your code. Code faster also doesn't mean faster code. So it's not about the performance, it's just using scripts to execute faster than you can click. And you can wire without thinking, but don't program brainless. Use your muscle memory to wire and edit stuff. Use your brain to program and develop. So just some remarks that I want to give. The PDF also contains these useful links to other presentations or to places where you can find um, plugins. So uh, I will deliver this presentation, this um, PowerPoint to Sam, and he also has the booklet. So we're going to provide it somewhere and you'll all get it. Uh, now, just, uh, I put the link to the booklet in the uh, chat, just FYI. Okay, great, great. So, um, to show you the shortcuts, I'm going to use LabVIEW. Um, this is done in LabVIEW 2020. So we can use the latest shortcuts because I like to demo stuff, right? Uh, hopefully you can also see all the shortcuts that I press on screen. Yes, those are uh, showing up. Yeah. So great. Uh, let's start with the native LabVIEW shortcuts. Uh, these are in LabVIEW. Um, most are known, so I'll go through them pretty fast, but um, there are some, some hidden beauties. Uh, you can reorder objects by using Ctrl K or Ctrl J, going backwards or forwards, and with the shift, it's all to the back or all to the front. If you Control and drag something, it's a copy. Control shift, you copy it in one direction. So if you resize an object, you can just resize it. If you keep the shift, it keeps the ratio. That's pretty obvious, but if you use the control, it resizes around the center point. If you control drag, it adds workspace. If you control alt drag, control alt drag, it reduces the workspace. St oh, Stefan, your shortcut things were disappearing and not showing up. I don't know if that's. They're showing up now, so I don't know what you did, but. Yeah, the control alt stuff's probably not working properly. Yeah. Okay. Um, control A selects everything, but that's obvious, but I want to mention it because the next one is very interesting is the control shift A. So when you align something, let's say align top edges, control shift A repeats your last alignment action. So you don't have to go to that menu every time. And if you distribute, then you need control D to repeat the last distribution. So not the control shift D. So they added the shift for repeat last alignment because control A was selecting everything. 
Uh, in the lab view environment, if I select, I want to search for my text. I can search for it. Now, Control Shift F will show you the search results. Control G will go to the next one. Control Shift G will go backwards. Uh, you can also cycle your lab view windows, like you can cycle windows and the windows environment. Um, the control tab goes through all your lab view windows and with shift you go through them backwards. You can't see the order right now because I don't have many windows open. Control L shows the error window. There are a lot of errors because this VI is not meant to run. It's just a demo on the shortcuts. But it's a fast way to get your errors without hitting the run button. Control Shift E shows this VI in the Project Explorer. So then you don't have to look for it. Whereas this one, just go to the VI, Control Shift E, and it highlights it in the Project Explorer. Uh, this one is a very useful one, but also a very unknown one. Control Shift W opens the All Windows dialog box, shows all the lab view windows that are open. You can select multiple ones, save them, close them, or if you select one of them, you can show it. And Control Shift B is the class browser, which is a nice dialogue. If you have classes, you can then select the class library, class object, my class from this project. And then you can see a nice overview of these are my properties in the class. These are static VIs, and these are dynamic VIs. And this class also inherited stuff from the active framework. Now, when you select the property, you can create a, re a write or a read property, and then you can put it on the block diagram. For static or dynamic VIs, you can just create them and put them on the block diagram. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the most known shortcut in LabVIEW is Control E, so switch. But since it's the most known one and the most used one, I put this in my mouse button. So I'm now I'm not using keyboard. I'm just clicking on the middle button of my mouse, and I use this uh, little tool called X mouse button control, because uh, it it helps me to switch faster between the front panel in the block diagram. Control space is quick drop, but that's another chapter in this uh, presentation. So we'll talk about that later. Control T splits the window. And Control T is also a very nice quick drop shortcut that we'll talk about later. So sometimes I accidentally activate this one. And it's good to know that Control Z or Control Z restores to the previous situation. This is one that I don't recommend, but it's a navigation window, Control Shift N. So there is this window and you can move your block diagram around. And I've added some comments way out of my, uh, resolution of the monitor. So don't use it, stick to one screen, but if something's outside your screen, you can go and look with it with the navigation window. A quick way to show VI properties is control I. And for the ones who use it, but control Y is the History window of your VI. We use Git, so 
our history is in there, not in the VIs themselves. There are some VI hierarchy shortcuts, but there's a list in the booklet. We don't use it and don't have much to tell about those. Um, for debugging purposes, uh, you have the debugging. If you have a breakpoint, you can step into, step over, or step out of uh, sub VIs or nodes. So you can do it with control down, control right, or control up. And then there are file operations, which are similar to most applications. So you have a new VI open. The control W is closes your VI. That's a special one. And control shift S saves everything. Control Q is quit left here. Basic editing is also similar to most application, except for the redo function. That's not control Y, but control shift Z. Yeah. For help. Control H shows up the, the context help, and then you can just move your mouse around. But I always have this thing when the mouse moves and I want to go to detailed help, like oh, this Y loop, and I want to go there, but I accidentally stop on the for loop and my help is gone. So, and it's nice to know that Control Shift L locks your context help. So now you can move around and go to this detailed help, for example. Uh, opening the help is F1 or control question mark. But this uh, control shift L to lock the context help is, is very useful. Uh, on the tools and palettes, the Space bar just toggles between two. The tab toggles between four tools on your curve. And shift tab enables or disables automatic tool selection. Now, not sure how many of you use automatic tool selection and how many don't, but you can type it in the chat and Sam will let me know. If you need the tools palette, shift right click and it's there. Also, this boolean is there for automatic tool selection. Are people still using non automatic tool selection? Uh, Malcolm said he is. Uh does not use the automatic tool selection. Uh, yeah, the, I, I can't get used to it either. The general consensus seems to be the automatic solution. But the, yeah, my problem is when it first came out, it was very buggy. Or, and it was very hard to get on the exact pixel, but it's gotten much better. So if you haven't tried in a while, I suggest trying it. But uh, I'm going to do that. Yeah. 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 So the challenge uh, that uh, that I give people is try it for a week and 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 then you'll see after a week you you'll you're um, you're gonna have trouble the first couple of days but after that you you should be good now the thing that I don't remember Sam and is it control or shift that gives you the immediate next uh, tool I thought it was just tab. tab I thought no tab no no no, just... no when you're uh, going on the automatic tool huh? and you're for example, Post, uh, positioning your tool on the corner of uh, an array. There's two things that it can do. It can resize the array, right? So if you are having trouble on to which one you want to use, you can put uh, right next to there and then do the control. I think it's control or shift. It's shift. Uh, somebody said it's shift. And if you do shift, it goes oh. to the uh, immediate next. So it's trying to guess which tool you want to use. So you press shift, it goes to the next logical tool. And that helps people that have problems with the specific uh, pixel. 
Wow. Okay. I did not know that. And that is amazing. Cause I yeah. do hate that. Cause there are a few times when it doesn't pick the right one. Yeah. Well, especially I, I find it when I am connecting remotely to a customer's computer, mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot harder to find the right pixel because you have different sizing uh, while, while you're going through any uh, uh, um, monitor sharing application. So the shift comes uh, very useful. Um, so well, well, every time that I, try to start using automatic tool selection. Uh, I'm so used to hitting that tab. And every time that I hit the tab, the automatic tool selection is off. Yeah, you turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, in, and this is this is a joke that I always tell when I teach classes in these household, you know, in most households, you have a whole discussion about whether the toilet uh, uh, cap needs to be on or, or uh, uh, closed or not. In this uh, household is the automatic tool being on or off. Uh, Luis asked okay. me to go help him with code and he always has it off and I start having I mean I, I start moving my my <laughs> cursor around trying to find the tool and it doesn't work and until he says oh, oh sorry let me turn it on <laughs> okay no. and somebody is saying Olivier is saying so shift it helps you to go to the media next one and control forces the select tool okay great So let's continue with SubVIs. On the SubVI, when you double click it, it opens. When you control double click it, it opens the block diagram. When you open it and you drag it, it's placed there. When you open it and you shift drag it, it's placed there with constants wired already. Now, if you put a VI here from the VI palette, easy, but when you control right click to open the VI palette, then go to that VI. It doesn't place it there, but it opens that VI. So you can open a VI from the palette. Well, just to highlight the control R is run a VI. Control point means abort. It doesn't mean stop. It's an abort. A control M will switch between run mode and edit mode. So your VI looks like when it's running. It's useful to test your context menus or how does it look when it's running. It's not actually running. Control run will recompile this VI and control shift run will recompile all VIs. And then there is- Stefan, the I have volume. a question. Uh, for yes. the control shift, does it re recompile all VIs or just that all VIs in that hierarchy, right? So it doesn't recompile all VIs in your project or anything. It just recompiles like that VI and all its sub VIs? Not sure. Thought it was everything that's in memory. Oh, okay. I didn't. I didn't know. So, okay. Yeah, it should be everything in memory. Sam. Everything in memory. Okay, cool. So you have a tap order, and you can use it while you're running. Using the shift tap will go backwards to that order. And using control down or up will move your key focus in and out of uh, arrays and clusters. So on wiring, you can select a single segment, double or the triple click selects the entire wire. Now, when you want to wire something, my automatic wiring is off. When I press A, uh, it's on now. A again, it's off. So sometimes it's on and you don't want to yeah, I don't recommend going behind it, but it's not always automatic wiring the way you want it. And the same for wire connectivity. When you move, it's automatic wire connectivity is on right now because um, the wires keep connected. 
So with W, you toggle that wire connectivity and now it's off. So spacebar helps you switch directions of the wire that you're creating. And when you're moving an object, now it's automatic wiring is on and spacebar toggles it off. So now there's no automatic wiring. Spacebar again, and there's automatic wiring. And when you shift click, it undoes your last wire point. These are some wiring tricks that can help you place the wires in a way that you like. Um, with the wiring, when you have the wiring tool, control clicking switches inputs. When you have a two input function, it's called the switcheroo. And in the latest versions, you can also switch it when only one is selected uh, one one input is wired but then you have to click on the wired input so it doesn't work on the non-wired input um, on text if you shift enter you can add the next element so also in cases, shift enter is the next case. And there's a special one because control shift enter will also create the next case, but it duplicates the case. So you can see on the label that the case was duplicated. And then with control equals or minus you can increase or decrease the font size and then i've added some environment enhancements to this presentation so there's a presentation of darren ettinger little things in left 2020 and you can also read the upgrade notes but some nice things that they've added are a select item dialog box which is like quick drop but you can select an item in a enum and then instead of scrolling through a very long enum you can use a dialog box and the same goes for uh, show, showing the case of a very big uh, case structure so you can uh, find uh, it a lot Stephane, easier we have, we have a question here sorry i missed it yeah. um it says, do you know how to create a case label with more than one letter without re-clicking the label? Case. Yeah, sorry, that might be from in the last one I missed. Here. Yeah, so you're saying, do you know how to create a case label? So maybe- uh, uh, I can do other uh, labels as well. Mm -hmm. So there's- I'm not sure if that maybe maybe that was duplicate only. I remember using duplicate often, and then I'm trying to type a label, but it just takes the first letter. And no, it's just uh, when you duplicate the case, uh, it duplicates everything in it, and you type in your own label. Yeah, maybe it was some weird lab view bug or something. I haven't yeah. noticed that behavior myself. No. So. Yeah. There's also a new, better way to rearrange your cases. It's this dialog box, and then you can just select multiple ones, move them, um, just sort this selection, or select everything, sort it again. So it's a much better way than it used to be to rearrange your cases. 
or dilute some by, by having multiple selections uh, available as well. You can hide your event data node. So if you don't need it, now it's gone. Visible items is there. Same goes for iteration terminals. So now the I is gone. Mm, it's here. And when you select multiple things, you can create a cluster from your selection. Those are just some nice things in LabVIEW 2020. So let's go over to uh, quick drop shortcuts. Um, first thing, if quick drops outside of your screen, just hit F3 and it moves back to the center of your screen. So if for some reason it's lost, it's a good way to get it back. Um, now, a new thing is also that the help is synchronized with uh, quick drop, the context help. It wasn't a couple of years ago, but now it is. So you can see the function that you're looking for in quick drop and, and its help. Um, this VI is something that uh, my demo project contains, and it's, uh, I'll also give it to Sam, and you're, you're going to get it. Uh, it shows some quick drop abbreviations by data type. So it's a good way to memorize them. Uh, for example, here, the Gaussian then remainder has two quick drop uh, abbreviations. In the Boolean, we have the constants and um, equations, then string constant, concatenate string, format string. This is the matrix size or 2D array size, this one. Then you've got bundle by name, unbundle by name, which I use a lot. Here are all kinds of structures. The in place element is NES. You have a conditional structure, dynamic disabled uh, structure. Um, I think these things are created for right hand developers. So that's why FS is not for loop is FS and like for loop structure and not L because that's way too far for your left hand. Uh, conversions actually type in the thing you want to convert to and that, that's usually what you need. On a VI server, you have the property node and the invoke node. So RN and NV. Uh, for front panels, I don't use quick drop a lot, um, but I can recommend the design palette of JKI because then you have a preview. It's quick, like quick drop, but at least it gives you a preview of the thing you want to put in there. And then if you want to train yourself, there's a small game that Darren made. So it's called Falling Shortcuts. And you just have to type in uh, I'm not sure what this one is. Start over. So equal, not equal. And every time you type in and what secret structure. So if you got some time left and just train yourself couple of minutes a day, you'll get to know these uh, shortcuts very fast. And you can make it very difficult, easy, medium, hard, or they're not in your level. So by the time you reach that, then those things drop very fast. The 
So also something I want to highlight is every time that you look for a, a function or something on quick drop, like increment, I need this one. So pay attention to the quick drop shortcut. And if it's something that you use a lot, you will memorize it and you will start using the shortcut. Now, quick drop also has control keys. So small scripts that you can run from quick drop. There are a couple of default ones in LabVIEW. The control, when I select the property node or an invoke node, I do control B, control space for quick drop. Then I type in the numeric control B. So now I change this pop property node to a numeric property node. So with control B, you can change the, the class. And this one is a Boolean that you get the disabled property. Now I enter if strip control shift B changes the property that you're reading. Control D will wire all the terminals. Control space, control D will wire all terminals with controls and indicators. Control space, control shift D will wire all inputs with constants. This is new. That's if you open a VI, quick drop, control F. And everything's arranged according to the connector pane. Let's save it. Um, this is when I copy this, not. Oh, wait. I'll do the quick drop, not control I, insert it. That's the default control I. Now, the booklet also contains a link to a little, a slightly modified control I, because when I copy it, uh, enter nothing, control I, it uses the thing that's on your clipboard. So copy, control I will insert two of them, but I was I actually wanted just one on both wires, so that's with control shift I, and then it's there. So you can insert stuff, special plugin that also uses the clipboard functionality, which I think is even more handy. Uh, this is also a very new one, up to 2020, I think. Um, this icon is still default with quick drop control K. It puts some text on the icon. It uses the VI name and changes the icon. It tries to match the first or first couple of words. Control O resets to origin. Oh, that's Quick drop, control O, and that also works on the block diagram. Uh, control P is a little bit same situation as control I. Um, it's replace, but there's also a special one that uses the clipboard. So I can replace this with divide control P and now it divides. When I copy the add, nothing in quick drop, control P, it replaces with whatever's on the clipboard. Control R is remove and rewire. So the 
UI that I selected is deleted and the wires are reconnected. This one is the one that I was talking about before. Control, quick drop control T moves your labels, controls labels to the left, indicator labels to the right. And if you forget to press the control space before, then your windows are split. Control W will wire objects together. You can select a whole lot of uh, PIs that you want instead of clicking all those separate wires. Um, it's smart enough to do it like this. So it wires the top ones together, the bottom ones together. And control shift W wires them and does a cleanup. Now, for those who trust left you to clean up their block diagrams, eh, I, I usually don't. I, I want to keep control of that myself. Um, until here, everything was native. Now, we're moving over to uh, custom plugins. So, align and distribute. When you select stuff, control A gives you on the top tip of your mouse this little dialog and you can select something and you control shift a you can align and distribute control a was only to align control c is to create something so local control c Creates the local or ref control C. It reference control C. It should create the reference. It's somewhere else. Well, um, I got one that's under my control. E and then opens window ex Windows Explorer and highlights the, the VI. So that's a good way to find it on disk straight away. Um, by the way, all these custom plugins, you can use whatever letters you like. These are not default ones, but I had to figure a way to fit them on my keyboard. Control G. Shows the class in the Project Explorer. And you can use that from any wire, terminal, a constant, a control, or even a sub VI. Just select the sub VI. And then if there's a class in it, it goes to the class. You can label your wire. So label, control L, and the labels on there. But be aware. This doesn't work on multiple labels on the same time. If I want to change this to a double control a DBL and then control M, we'll make this a double. I'll make this a unsigned eight control M. So instead of going to representation, selecting the right one, you can use quick drop for that. Then there's one to netify your VI. Darren Nettinger wrote a quick drop plugin that does a lot of things. It turns off automatic error handling, it turns off auto grow, makes a default color on your front panel, uh, moves all error wires to the back. Uh, a lot of stuff that's recommended. Um, and it, it it's like cleaning up your VI, doing, um, yeah, making it uh, according to the guidelines. Then you can format your numerics by adding a formatation, entering it, and then Control Q, 
and it's like this. This one, let's make it binary. Um, there are a couple of ways to manage your paints and splitters. One of them is the, the splitter manager, which is a plugin and looks very nice to it's this splitter, you can find it, you can change the color, you can move its position, some properties. So that's a good way. Another way is in the tools. I have it there. I don't have it in Quick Drop, but you can also add it to your Quick Drop if you like. It's pain relief. And pain relief is like this. You can select a pain, a splitter, or another pain and also change colors, lock it, change the position. Uh, one that I use, and that's in my list, is the Control U. That's for a user interface manager. That's a tool that captures screen states. So the user interface manager has a lot of plugins. And basically, you can create your own plugins and every property from every control and indicator on your front panel, you can capture it and capture it into an XML file, change it, load it. It even works while the VI is running. So control U does this for you in quick drop way. You can, um, Oh, uh, there are a couple yeah, questions. Yeah. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you. But yeah. uh, so uh, Olivier said that pain relief, the default quick drop is Control A. So Olivier made that point. But uh, Kevin asked, does the manager yeah. still work for system-based splitters? Had issues in the past with LabVIEW. So I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. I haven't had those issues. Uh, I remember always using the classic yeah. ones because I thought that you can make them transparent and some of the other ones you couldn't. But anyway, carry on. Hopefully that. Is. No, I'm not sure about those. Yeah. No. Um, VI ignore. So if you want the VI analyzer to ignore something, you can also enter the, the name of your test. Uh, don't have a wow. So it puts it there and then it this structure is ignored on this test. Um, control X is a class browser. It's like quick drop, but only with the the methods from that class. I got a, that's control Y. This is quick run, quick drop. So if you run out of quick drop letters on your keyboard, you can configure a lot more. So like ACP, it run this VI. Now when you type in ACP in quick drop and hit control Y in my case, um, it runs that VI. And this one, the one is one that I make myself. So control Z rearranges the cluster. Um, when you type in hor like horizontal, it auto fits horizontal. You can yeah, I really ran out of letters, so I'm going to decide the numbers. Um, insert an in-place element, or even here. Rotate scroll bars, so that one's not working. In the configurations from yeah, 
still on five. So like now the scroll bars are off, scroll bars are on, must be set to two. Uh, this one was a April's full joke of JKI, so you can apply magic and a magic fairy adds a random delay and then everything should work. Uh, Kevin has a question. It's kind of the current. Uh, he has a question. It's not entirely related to your question, but what version of LabVIEW handles VIN ignore? It's fairly recent, isn't it? Like 2018, 2019, something like that. Maybe? I think so. Yeah. I think it's 2018. Mm -hmm. Sounds about right. All right, carry on. Yeah. Um, you can enable the current. Uh, Sub diagram in a diagram disabled structure. So you select the disabled one, quick drop, and enable it. And then this is a bonus one. I got an auto documentation tool. When I go to the description of this CI documentation, there's some rubbish in there. You can also see it in the help. Now, when I run this tool, it uses all the hashtags here, the comments. And now it should. Yeah. It entered the VI description. So yeah, it's there. So it says inputs, outputs. So that's a fast way to document your help description of the VI. And then this is a nice tool, but it's not yet completely released. It's a way to search through LabVIEW and Derek Bomarito is creating it. So you can search my text, search it. And it has a search history and I should uh, I had to oh how to go text search and labels caption string values search did it find anything in here ah oh, it's in the other VI yeah so but it's it's a nice tool. Uh, it's a good way, a nice way to to have a search history. So we're gonna hear from that. It's keep an eye on this one. So these are the quick drop shortcuts, and then there are some shortcut menu plugins. So there is one to add a description to your VI. So sub VI, I think it says description. And then you can also enter the description manually in a fast way. So these shortcut menu plugins are usually another way of doing things. Depends on what you're used to. More quick drop or more right click menus. You can add a benchmark structure benchmark this so it gives you two timers and a and a flat sequence structure you can also remove the benchmark structure so it's labeled in the code and it knows what to remove you can change the mechanical action from a boolean from the block diagram mechanical action and then change it here it seems Pretty normal, but it was, it's been a long time. This wasn't available. So um, you can change a LabVIEW class. So change oh. the LabVIEW class, gives you a pop up to change it to a different class. Yeah. So uh, how are you switching cases without actually clicking on the drop down? I don't think you mentioned that yet. Ah, OK. Just yeah. that's a fancy uh, one to know. Control and then scroll it. Yeah. Cool. Um, when you hit the control and you scroll your mouse wheel. Cool. 
Sorry, yeah, I just noticed that you hadn't mentioned that, and I was like, ha, cool. Carry on. Yeah, it's it's not a key, it's not a real keyboard shortcut, it's a mouse shortcut. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can copy the limited data. So um, data operations, copy the limited data, and then you can paste it in Excel or something. I'll paste it and it's there. And you can also copy as JSON. And then when I have a notepad, I'll paste it. I can change it, copy it from the notepad and then paste from JSON and it's there. So if you work a lot with JSON strings, also numerics, copy as JSON. And then it says JSON numeric. You can create constants or constants as icons. So big clusters, if they use a lot of block diagram space, create them as an icon. You can create some create uh, yeah I can't do it here so when I have a new yeah Create event case, and then I can create a value change. I can't do it in my demo because there are multiple event structures in that project in that VI. And I can do it here. It moves the the control inside that case, and it creates the event that you selected. You can. There are cases where this Tunnel is unwired, so you can set create create constant in all unwired frames, and then there is a constant. But you have to click it very well. You have to click on the inner side of the terminal, because otherwise you don't get that menu option. You can replace on um, in place elements, you can replace border nodes, you can replace tunnels with border nodes. So you get this. Usually, there's a create constant, but you can also create scalar constants. These are plugin context menu so you have to install this little plugin and then you get this extra thing in the menu you can create a vi from selected wires create sub vi from selected wires it won't be a lot in there but at least your inputs and outputs are already correct then you can start working on what it has to do you can find events and then you get an event search box you can go to this event or to this event so if you have a lot of events on one control or if you have a good reason to have those it's a, a way to find them find your wire source so find wire source this one goes all the way up to here this one just to here. So it drags the wire through tunnels up until the source, not to sub -PIs. You can change labels to constants. So um, change to constant, booleans, numbers, 
or plain text. If you right click a bundle structure or a array, a built array, go to N elements, like I want 15 elements. So then it's, I don't have to count them, it's 15, so. And also for bundled structures, go to N, then like this. You can insert a bundle by name and you can select what you want to bundle, like the status. And that also works on a insert bundle by name, also works on classes. You can insert a build array. I think this is pretty standard nowadays. You can insert in-place element structures. And if it's on a cluster, it's a bundle or unbundle. And you can also do that, insert in-place element structures. Select multiple local variables and change the direction all at once. Uh, I used this a couple of years ago because then it wasn't possible to do it on multiple uh, locals at the same time. You can right click and open a class and uh, show class library. That was the control G in my quick drop but you can also do it with uh, your class library with the right click menu. If you're using Active Framework, this one is useful because if you have a sent uh, message, then you can open the message handler and it opens the, the VI, the method that's actually being called from the, the do VI of your Active Framework. Uh, you can open type this from a wire. So open type this. You can open it from here, but with this plugin, you can also open it from a wire. And there's a plugin that pops out your breakpoint menu. So set breakpoint and the breakpoint manager are at the top level of your menu instead of a level down. And you can also use this at runtime. Also the create, these are, this is default in current LabVIEW versions. The constant control indicator are at the top of your menu, but it was, it isn't in LabVIEW 2018, it's not yet. So then you can use this plugin if you want to have it there. Um, on compound arithmetics, you can probe all inputs at once. So you don't have to probe one, two, three, Just probe them all together. This also works at runtime. Change your uh, replace with invoke node, replace with property node. I can remove uh, insert coercion function to remove the coercion dots. Remove some unused terminals. The thing is, I don't know which ones are standard LabVIEW and which ones are not because they're all always there in my LabVIEW versions I installed them right away so well uh, also to your point so, Stefan some of those started out as uh community ones and then got adapted by LabVIEW anyway so, yeah. yeah yeah sorry yeah carry on select property yeah when you right click and select property you get a dialog box and uh I want the 
value property, but the signaling one, you can select it from here. And, and uh, set the current event to value change. So, um, uh, yeah, here. I think it came up when you clicked on the control mm -hmm. itself. I saw it there. Yeah. Yeah, right click on the control. Yeah, set the current event to value change. Yeah. And then it value changes this one. Um, when you click on a splitter, you can also set splitters and paints. And that's another way, that's another dialog to manage your uh, paints and splitters. Uh, just something tells me there's something wrong about the interface if we need yeah. that many tools in order to figure it out but maybe that's just me yeah yeah uh text properties so it gives you this extra menu for text left center right all this kind of stuff Here, this is why are multiple things to a bundler. If I select the same stuff, I can create a built array, bundle them, even concatenate because they're strings with uh, different data types. I can bundle them or to, yeah, just create a built array. It's also a plugin that does this for you. And then one more bonus one. Uh, it's from Tom Aquillan. So you can, if you have a VI that belongs to a certain class, um, I'm gonna add a string and I can add the reference to the data class. So, my class is here, and now it. Oh, I'll show you. Add the reference, and now it has a reference. Add the add the add to data class just means add this as a control to the data class, and now it's there. It's also useful when you're doing active framework stuff and you want all the references there to update your front panels. So that's it. It was a little bit over an hour. Um, and it was a lot. So I hope you all take away something. Are there any more? Questions? Uh, I did not see any real uh, questions in the chat that we haven't done. Uh, lots of praise, lots of people saying it was very useful and they learned some new things. So, and some of them have been coding live you for a long time. I so. like it. And <laughs> uh, uh, someone well, mentioned it was like drinking uh, from a fire hose. Yeah, I know. I know it is. It is. It, it's a long list and it's just uh, an enumeration of a lot of things, but you got to start memorizing them, just a couple of them and, and ones that you use the most. Um, but by having this overview, it can help you. Um, yeah. Follow my Twitter account and, and I'll post a shortcut of the week every week from now on. I think that would be a good way to, to uh, learn it is just pick one a week and try it out and see. Because, yeah, trying to memorize all those things is just super overwhelming. But at least if you know it exists, when you have to do it, you're like, okay, I know there's an easier way to do this. Let me go figure it out, maybe. But the PDF is very nice. So I posted the link to the PDF. And I think, Stefan, you said you're going to send me a copy of that VI as well. Yeah, yeah, it's a project. I'll uh, export the stuff, and then you also get it 
together with the, the PowerPoint. But okay. now, question: that, that do you, also do you... contains the the links. Okay, uh, question for your VI. In order for that to work, they have to have everything installed, correct? Or do you have a, P, a VIPC or something that will uh, install all of the plugins for them? No, no. Okay. Um, in order to work, it has to be installed. Um, but especially the first uh, two VIs are native Flapshu ones, so that works. Okay. Cool. And you still have the you still have the overview. You just have to install the ones that you like and the ones that you want to test. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Also yeah. there, uh, I'm just using my own letters for the custom ones. Mm -hmm. No, that is very impressive. That is quite the list. So uh, any last minute questions? Uh, as I mentioned in the chat, I, this is recorded, so I will send that out uh, along with uh, Stefan's stuff. And you can look that's uh, up. There's a link to it. So. All right, well, thank you very much, Stefan. Thank you everyone else for coming. Um, Stefan, I mentioned the LabVIEW Mastermind earlier. I have a link to that in the chat. So uh, if you're interested in that, check that out. And you can either send me an email or fill out, there's an application on there either way. Just let me know if you're interested. So thank you very much and I will see you uh, all later. Sam, I was, thank you, Stefan. Bye-bye. Sam, I was just going, Sam, I was just going through the chat. And this bitly shortcut that you posted, um, that's, that's linking to my old presentation. So we're gonna put the new one somewhere else. And I can't, can't redirect the bitly. Do so you, you have a new one, Stefan? Yeah, there's uh, the the link is to the old one, so uh, there there is a new one. Um, I'll I'll, uh, I'll send it to you. Okay. Or I can okay. also put it in the. I'll, I'll I'll put it on our Slack. So okay. Okay. Well, this is great. Thanks a lot. Okay. Bye. Mm, bye.